Welcome back to The Charismatic Voice. There are three songs named Lost in Hollywood, one by Neil Diamond, one by Rainbow, and this one by System of a Down. They all have different lyrics, but they share similar stories. I've been told that this one is particularly emotional for Shavo, whom I adore. Let's get to it. I love the rolling waves that we're hearing in the drums here. That is uh, that's just such a cool effect. Uh, also, shout out to our viewers. There have been so many of you who specifically have been requesting this performance, Rock in Rio and Lost in Hollywood. I know this song isn't often seen as like the popular sewed song, right? Um, but this specific performance has been coming up so much. I'm, I'm really excited to see the rest of it. So far, the sound quality has been excellent and we really trust in your recommendations. So thank you for it. So far, loving those waves from the drums. Ah, uh, Chavo really looks like he's having a moment here. I love this band. <laughs> Just putting that out there. I I love how much their music is charged with emotion. It gets me. Um, especially having lived in LA and uh, just seen so many different people come through there and uh, and know that some people have their entire identity challenged by coming to Hollywood where they thought they would just live in their dreams. It's, it's a tough place for, I think, a lot of people to be. I loved it, okay? I'm gonna put that out there. I loved living in LA. Yeah, the traffic sucks. <laughs> yeah, the pollution sucks. But the people are amazing. I think that it's got such an incredible, uh, incredible, a group of creative entrepreneurs there I felt like everywhere I went, I was meeting somebody else whose life was fascinating that had found some way to bring just this beautiful creativity to life in a totally unexpected way. So I really loved living in LA and I found so many fellow nerds there. <laughs> but uh, that said, gosh, I know it, it changes some people. It can be so hard. And Darren's vocals here, it, it, they're so pained. They're so real. And then when we get that harmony in, I think, I think that surge on the harmony, wow. 
it's haunting and it feels like some of the haunted people that I knew. There's a lot of longing. That look, that look from Chavo there, you know that there's something super personal going on. I don't know what it is. I, I mean, I think that this story is very personal to them. But, gosh, it seems like it's got extra depth for him here. That's amazing. Uh, yeah, I, I'm. this song feels somehow more haunting than a lot of System of a Down's other songs, which were already haunting, there's something about it that just, it feels like it's already leaving an imprint and we're like not even a minute and a half in. Whew. All the best they ever seen You should have never gone to Hollywood That feels dreadful. Oh, I like that interval stretch up. In the bass, that was a beautiful, the bottom. It did at one point, oh, it was so, like it, it had the da -dum. That first part is just a half step. And then when it went all the way up there, that part it had this big leap, like almost a leap of faith. So it was like, ah, you have Jaws, impending doom, plus hope in the same line. <laughs> And then right here. Beautiful. point out with both Serge's and Darren's tones right now, there is so much nasality going on, right? This, um, it has something in common here with grunge. Very, very focused in the front of the face. They're not opening their mouths very much. It, it's not in a range where they really need to open their mouth for particular vocal production. So with grunge singers, you usually see uh, more closed mouths when they're down lower in the range. And then when they go up high, you see them dropping their jaws a lot more, dropping for the top. And I've seen uh, these guys do that as well. When it's in this lower area though, it can be particularly effective to add a little more nasality in there because that brings a little more cut to the sound, especially in a live performance where you don't really have a chance to master that afterwards and make sure all your levels are correct. Having that cut is especially, especially important. That's from a, that's from a song, not this song. <laughs> well, obviously it's from this song. That's from a different song, Wave Your Hands in the Air Like You Just Don't Care. Isn't that a rap song? I don't, that is digging deep. Like somewhere way back into something I heard thought was catchy, but probably didn't actually listen to that much. So uh, I don't know, it's somewhere in there. If you know what that song is, tell me. I think they're referencing it and I'm missing the reference, mostly.
I love the way, though, that that phrase, um, it's semi-spoken, but when it goes waving like you just don't care, it has a very specific rhythm, and it even starts to fit into a specific melody at that moment. Very, very interesting setting of those words. Let me see everybody's hands up in the air, waving, waving like you just, just don't care. care. Fascinating. Wow. There's always, always a moment in System of Down songs where I feel like I catch this commentary that they have on a particular subject. And I think that's in this counter melody that we're hearing going on, uh, right? You have, you essentially have Darren who's saying the real, the real thoughts, but then there's this echo of what society might be thinking in their song somewhere. It's so fascinating, man. I, I really have loved getting into System of a Down, if you can't tell. In this case, it's almost like a, some sort of hypnotic lull from the counter melody we're hearing. It feels like almost it's like a daze that's kind of happy, but not really. <laughs> Like, almost like you're a, a zombie that looks pretty, right? That's what it feels like there. Um, and then you have the truth without any sort of sugar coating coming from Darren. It's so fascinating. That's when you get those stomach drops of like, oh, wow, this band is so good and they speak such real things. I was standing on the wall. We're going to switch into a different uh, chapter, it feels like here. So uh, just one more brief comment on the sounds here. I think it is so important for creatives to be authentic in their presentation, be unique, uniquely who they are. A lot of times when somebody is an aspiring creative, they're aspiring to be like someone else. And while that can help you find your journey, the most important part is that you are your journey, that you are sharing what makes you uniquely you. And that's not just in composing or creating a particular product, um, that's also in voice technique. If somebody creates the perfect sound that is like, ah, pristine in this way, in this way, in this way, in this way, somewhere in there, I feel like we lose humanity. There are some voices out there that have that pristine part that their voice is like, they feel like they're meant to be that way. But when we have everybody else trying to be this idea, we suddenly lose all of those precious stories in between. This is one of the reasons I think, um, I think that as AI continues to expand, I think that people are gonna come more and more back to moments like this where, <laughs> A lot of people would think that uh, Darren's voice right now is ugly, right? It has an edge to it, and it has a lot of nasality in it. There's not a, a soaring melody that's being uh, 
is being highlighted at this moment. The melody is actually in this like weird hypnotic lull that's happening. Uh, and that's beautiful and a, a little bit oh, stale also. With Darren, his voice is just so exactly what he is at this point. And I think that that's really powerful and important for any singer to strive to just being themselves. I love the way that we have this like sort of beautiful outward wrapping paper with that hypnotic melody in the background where it's like, yeah, you can make that sound, but does that feel real? It gives this amazing juxtaposition essentially between authenticity and striving for something that maybe we shouldn't be so quick to idolize. Let's go back. Right. Wow. Wow. Phony people come to pray. Oh, oh, oh. Look at all of them back to stay. Phony people come to pray. That's a beautiful weaving of their voices here. That was, that was just so gorgeous. One of the things I really liked about System of a Down is the way that they've brought uh, some of their, just essentially their heritage into the ornamentation of lines here. Ornamentation often is like the really fast sort of florid notes. Uh, they both did that here, but at different times and they did this, this weaving in and out that was gorgeous. These two paired together so well. There's one. Oh, did he not do the ornament? He didn't do the ornament. My bad, Serge didn't do the same ornament afterwards, even though it was echoing the main melody, he didn't do it. I think I heard a phantom echo of it because I've heard him do so many ornamentations before, which by the way, uh, I'm gonna be doing a full analysis of Toxicity, the album. Uh, this was requested by so many of you during our Kickstarter launch party, which was a six hour long live stream. And we reached some incredible goals during that live stream, which unlocked this uh, full album analysis that's gonna be available to all of the backers. I am really looking forward to finally listening to the whole album. I've restricted myself uh, because I wanna make sure that my, my first times on here really are first times. Um, but I'm not waiting any longer. I'm gonna listen to the whole Toxicity album and analyze it. And I'm so excited to hear more of how their voices work together and the ornamentation, how they've wrapped it all in. I, I just think that this entire band is full of mastermind musicians. And I get to analyze that. Okay, uh, if you want in on that, make sure you check out the Kickstarter. I'll pin it below or put it in the comments. And for just $2, you can be a part of this amazing thing, supporting vocal research, which applies to what they're doing, by the way, uh, and you'll get access to that analysis. So I invite you all to join me in championing vocal research. Come back just a little bit again to that part because there's um I know so many times in this part I love it but I think you can hear the difference between a lighter natural voice and a heavier natural voice really well um neither of them have a super heavy voice uh, but Darren's voice is naturally just a little bit lighter like a little thinner I would think the vocal folds might be like a tiny bit thinner or um like maybe a little bit shorter than Serge's um, and you hear that just in the echo one after another. I've had a lot of people ask me about the terms I use to describe voices. So 
In this moment, this is a great example of a lighter voice followed by a slightly heavier voice. Let's go back a little. See, so listen to that and how it sounds in surges. That's a really good example. <laughs> They're so good. And there's that hook again, that sort of hypnotizing melody. Oh! It looked like Shava was singing that um, that bit as well, right? Yeah. Nice build from the drums. out and Serge's voice there um, again check out how much mouth opening is happening not much uh, we're getting quite a bit of nasality but we're also getting a really uh, a really loud overtone there I've always been intrigued by his voice and wondered like what is it what is it in his sound that gives it such brilliance um, and one of those things I think is overtones um, that's the harmonics above. So if you have a single pitch, that includes a bunch of harmonics that are actually uh, above that pitch, which are like almost echoes, uh, are like almost like a little bit of reverb in some ways. They're, they're essentially uh, how the sound, the original pitch, which starts from here at your vocal folds, right? Your vocal folds go wacka, wacka, wacka. They create a pitch. And then that pitch marinates. Let's say it's like like when you sing in a bathroom and your mouth <laughs> is the bathroom. Oh gosh, don't go there. Um, <laughs> so think about the beautiful tile walls that are pitching or bouncing the pitches back and forth. The sound is marinating in here. And as it does that, there are aspects of the sound that get enhanced and will create these overtones or these harmonics, which gives the sound more luster gives it more color and can make it brighter or darker. And in this moment, when Serge sings, I hear just a very clear, uh, there's a, an amazing octave above that I'm hearing in there. And sometimes when we hear people singing on a studio album, there's a little bit of EQ that goes around their voice and that can make room for other instruments on the track. But when we're hearing live like this, sometimes we'll get moments that really highlight those overtones because they haven't had any extra pro producing done. <laughs> Right there, there was a really loud one there. Huh. One other quick note about that. Uh, those harmonics and overtones, that's what opera singers depend on and work years and years to emphasize because it helps kick their sound out in front of a massive orchestra into a huge hall without any microphone. It really helps the sound to travel more. So that might be one of the reasons why I also think that Serge has certain operatic qualities to his voice. Oh man. I gotta 
point out while the focus here is becoming that that hypnotic melody that's playing over and over and over and i love shavo's emotion darren is doing an excellent job of hitting these higher notes in falsetto which is this uh just like a very like light uh, higher register and it has this soaring effortless quality to it that creates such a beautiful balancing uh, quality to everything else that's going on. That. Like that's the kind of sound that we associate with countertenors a lot when they're singing up there in falsetto. And it can be challenging to move between a lower register and falsetto and he did it so, so effortlessly here. Wow, that was really well done. It's in the background. It's really well done. That was a wonderful transition. Oh. I am so excited to dig even deeper into System of a Down. And if you want to learn more about how you can support vocal research on upper laryngeal structures, I know we get real, real nerdy, and it does apply to all singing, to all genres to especially the weird distorted sounds, like some of the ones that they make in System of a Down. I will put a link about that in the About section, also pin a comment. And I hope that all of you will join me for some more analysis of System of a Down in this playlist over here, where you fall more in love with music every day.